tales for dark nights. Knuckles Supper Written by Drew Stepick Performed by Jason Hill Chapter 4 Children I looked at Des across the kitchen table. The duffel bag full of heroin sat in the middle. Okay, tool, what's your big super duper plan? Don't be a dick, he said as he dug into his teeth with a toothpick and then flung his hair out of his eyes. The way I see it, no matter what I come up with, it's better than that. He pointed to Bate, who was sitting on the couch, flipping through the channels with a remote. Leroy and Skillet sat on both sides of her, dead asleep. They were protecting her from Dez, nonetheless. I'm not going to tell you again. She's staying here for now until I can figure out what to do with her. Dez picked up a knife from the table and put it to his neck. How about... He dragged the knife across his throat. We kill the bitch. I stood up and knocked the knife out of his hand, scraping his ear. How about I kill you? Des threw up his arms, surrendering. <laughs> I'm just goofing around, brother. His shitty attitude was starting to get old. What's your awesome plan, Des? Jesus, RJ. Des picked up one of the dog's tennis balls and lobbed it across the room. Ouch! Bates squeaked as the ball pelted her in the jaw. I slapped him across the head. That was totally unnecessary. What? I was trying to throw it to the dogs. The dogs are sleeping and they hate you anyway, I reminded him. Daz looked over at Bait. Hey, little whore thing. What? Bait said, annoyed as she massaged her jawbone. Daz swiveled his fists over his eyes and in a baby voice added, Saw we... Bait tapped at the remote control, turning up the volume on the TV. Whatever, jerk, she said under her breath. I patted the duffel bag at the cloth handles. Get on with it, Des. Fine. Well, we both know no one saw us kill the BBP and those cops, right? I kicked my chair back and put my feet on the table. Yeah? Then, why don't we just take this and move it ourselves? Where do you want me to start, Des? First of all, Linwood Perry knows what we did. Secondly, he was sent to us from the Battlesnakes. Thirdly, how are we going to sell 50 pounds of H around here without anyone being suspicious about where the hell it came from? Des became animated like a TV pitch man delighting an audience of retirement home suckers. That's the beauty. They don't even know this heroin exists. They were expecting coke. So, they think we traded the coke for heroin. Either way, we'd be screwed. I'm sure Linwood and King Cobra are expecting us to deliver whatever we stole from the gathering back there in the alley. We lie. Where are we going to trade 50 pounds of heroin for coke and fly under the radar? The snakes control all the drugs. They'd know. Exactly my point, dildo. How are we going to sneak out that much extra junk onto the streets? We don't sell it on our streets. We sell this shit in Culver City. De Sangre territory. Are you fucking crazy? Who cares about those spicks? Listen, I get all the bottom feeders to go down there and sell like low-life peddlers. They know the territory. All they have to do is stay away from the areas with El Renato de Sangre tags. We let them sell the dope like they are just nobodies and bring the money back to us. It's not like we're sending them out with pounds. We give each of them a couple of 20 bags a day. I thought about it for a second. I never tell them straight up, but it was a great idea. I stroked my fingers down my chin. Hmm... I don't know, Des. If we miscalculate even a little bit, we'll be dead as shit. You know as well as I do that if we even fuck up slightly, 
King Cobra is going to have our nuts. <sighs> I'm going to do all the legwork, pussy. Start acting like a leader and not... He pointed to Bait, who was petting Leroy and Skillet. A babysitter. Watch what you say, Dez. I'm dead serious. There is a line not even you can cross, and you're getting really fucking close to it. It's just... It's just what... You're a nobody in the knucklers, bro. You're a nobody on the streets. If you disappeared, nobody would care. At all. The battle snakes have it out for us. According to Copperhead, I bounced back into the conversation. Okay, that right there. When did you and Copperhead become boyfriends? Even mentioning his name during a conversation about stealing drugs from his gang shows your complete lack of understanding. They hate us. We're lucky to be alive. You're not alive, Bait interjected from across the room. I kept my eyes deadlocked on Dez's. Shut up, Bait, I grunted from the side of my mouth. Come on, RJ, let me do this. I mean, you're going to get most of the money anyway, and you won't be doing any work at all. I grabbed the duffel bag and excused myself from the table. Get your hair cut. Dez sprung up from his chair. S so it's on? Call a meeting at the garage. I'm in, but I have to know that everyone else is cool with this. Just as Dez was about to show me some love, the remote control wrapped him in the face. No, he yelled as he started toward Bait. You're dead, whore. Bait backpedaled on the couch. Leroy and Skillet jumped in front of her, grimacing like they were rabid. They emitted warning snaps at Dez, broadening their parameter around Bait by moving their dense frames sideways, walling her in. Dez stepped back to the table, seizing his black army battalion jacket off the back of his chair. So, this is how it's gonna be, huh? He walked over my imaginary line that I told him not to ever cross and simply said, Thanks, brother. I stood my ground over him. Make the call if you want this to happen. Don't say a word to Copperhead. I'll sell your ass down with him and not even bat an eye. Don't even think about fucking with me, Des. I will ship your ass back to Skid Row COD with all your pussy followers. Without saying another word, he moved past me, bumping my shoulder, staring Bait down the whole time. Bait scrunched up in the corner of the couch and mimicked his fake crying. Sorry, she mocked. The door slammed behind him. Why? I asked her. What better stuff do I have to do with my life? Bates said. Why not go home to your family? You have that choice? Doesn't I don't? We have no families. Well, then how did you get here? How did you get on the streets? I scratched at my temple. Mm, not sure exactly. Anyway, this is a free ride for me. I don't like living on the streets either. I've already told you that we can't make vampires. Look, Bait, you've been here for a week now, and although you lock yourself in the bathroom with your shower mat while Des and I do our vampy stuff, yeah, vampy stuff. I'm never in the way. I sleep on the bathroom floor. Shower mat, I corrected her. Shower mat, she agreed. Do you really want me to go back out there and find another pimp? Maybe I can go hang out with those assholes at Hollywood High. I want to see what you do. It's not real pretty. We're way more dangerous than any pimp you could ever find. She frowned and tugged on my arm. Think of it this way. I can lead pimps and Johns and frat boys back here for you to kill. Thought about it for a second. It's dangerous. And kind of evil. The last thing I want to do is subject a 12-year-old to whore, she inserted. 
that's not what I was going to say. I can be one of those peewee guys. I can, like, get my hair cut all in my face and act all mysterious. She rambled on, jumping from one situation to another. I don't like being in the bathroom. It sounds like you guys have a good time out here. I mean, I like heroin too. I scratched my head. Bates, listen to me. You can't become a vampire. I assure you that it isn't a fun life, if you can even call it that. Then I'll be a gangster. Or can I be like a churro? <sighs> First of all, it's chola. Secondly, no one in the knucklers is Hispanic. I was close to throwing my arms up in frustration. How could someone who has been on the street for a year be so clueless? Chola, churro, what's the diff? The diff is that those kind of gangsters are different from us. When they jump someone into one of their gangs, they just beat the shit out of them or make them shoot someone. We maim people. You saw what was left of your pimp and you saw one of our peewees clean that shit up. She yanked my shirt off my shoulder. I can clean the house. I battered her hand away and straightened my shirt. What are you, the hooker Cinderella? The answer is no. Go grab your overnight bag and go back to your life. You fucking thought wrong. Go back to school. Go home. She started to well up, hid her freckly face behind her hair and pouted. Jesus, don't do that. Why would you cry? Did you ever think your parents might be concerned about you? You've been on the run for a long time now. They don't give a fuck at all, RJ. They don't care about me at all. My parents hate me. I want to live here and do what you do. God damn it, Bate. She looked up from her skunky hair and blinked her eyes. Has that shit ever worked? I asked her. If you wanted a doll or a toy, maybe. It did work when I asked my pimp if I could get a pair of higher-heeled shoes. It didn't work when I asked my mom to get my stepfather off me. She smiled a little bit. I wanted to return the laugh, but the fact was it just wasn't funny. This isn't a joke. She reached over to me and gave me a quick hug. Thanks, RJ. The room felt like it shrunk as I became limp. I looked over her shoulder for an escape. Human touch. Ugh. From a table behind her, she grabbed a shot glass. I made you this. I took it from her. What's this? It's some of my blood. Why? Come on, vampire man, will you just drink it? I didn't want to know where she drew the blood from. I guess she was just a cutter or something. What a weird little kid. Okay. I lifted the shot glass, cheered her, and slammed it down. She squealed and ran into her bathroom. Just as quickly as her horseshoes had reached the bathroom, I heard them clogging back. She poked her rosy red face around the corner. One more thing. Can I sleep on your floor? No. Cool. I want to beat the gang. Need to get ready. She fluffed up her hair. Can you give me some money to go shopping on Melrose? No. She hopped back and forth on her feet. Why? What's wrong with you? You want to know what's wrong with me? Fine. My stepfather used to make me finger myself in front of him while he jerked off. When he was about to blow his load, he'd press my head up against the corner of the room, drill it into the wall, and open up my asshole so he could come inside me. He used to pin my younger sister down and make her look his balls while he shoved his hand inside her. He called her Pinball and came in her face. You're a vampire, so why would you care? The room became silent. For the second time, I looked at the door for an escape, but rather than deal with anything, I pulled a bunch of blood-stained wadded bills from my jeans. Take it, go to Melrose, go wherever you want. 
She nabbed the money out of my hand and turned off the tantrum like it never occurred. Thanks. Good evening. This is Jason Hill, host of the Horror Hill podcast. You've been listening to a chapter from the award-winning novel Knuckle Supper by best-selling author Drew Stebeck. Knuckle Supper, Ultimate Gutter Fix Edition, and its critically acclaimed sequel, Knuckle Bald, are available now from Bloodbound Books. Check out the links in the video description and sticky comments below to pick up a copy today and show your support for indie horror. Also, please consider making a donation to Children of the Night today and help end teen prostitution and human trafficking. Children of the Night is a privately funded nonprofit organization established in 1979 with the specific purpose of providing intervention in the lives of children who are sexually exploited and vulnerable to, or involved in, prostitution and pornography. Visit childrenofthenight.org for more information today. From author Drew Stepick and all of us here at Chilling Tales for Dark Nights, thanks for listening and for your support. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.